Good afternoon, folks. Welcome back to the workshop. A um, couple of uh, preliminary things here. Apologies for any background noise that you're going to hear today. Maybe a bit of wind or a bit of traffic. Uh, maybe some aircraft. We've got some pretty incredible bushfires going on around here. It's 35 degrees here in the shed, um, so I don't want to shut the doors because uh, I'll probably pass out from the heat. But moving on. This unit here is out of a 2015-2016 Bentley Continental GT V8S, I believe. Uh, belongs to a good friend of mine. Just had the unit replaced by Bentley. Uh, wasn't connecting to his phone and um, just causing him a whole lot of grief. So he had it replaced by Bentley. And um, after a bit of a saga, he managed to get his hands on it for me to have a look at. So I'm going to open it up today and um, see exactly what all the fuss is about with this bit of kit. So normally I wouldn't be too interested in something like this, but there's a bit of a story behind this, so I think it's important that we take advantage of it as much as we can while we can. So the unit's probably, what, about three and a half, four years old now, and uh, has given minimal drama to the owner. Of course, aside from the usual back pocket trauma that one would expect to suffer when owning a vehicle of this sort of stature, we are in we are in the presence of royalty here, folks. So we uh, we should act accordingly. I've, you can see I've spared at the impact and gone back to um, manual tools. No, there is a bit more of a reason behind why I'm being gentle with this. Yeah, it's given given the owner very little grief. Um, obviously, he enjoys owning the car, enjoys driving the car. However, oh, look at that, we're in. When he started to um, investigate getting this unit replaced, he was told the nominal, fee, the nominal fee for such a unit, and if you're not sitting down, I suggest you do, seven and a half thousand dollars Australian. That's right, seven and a half thousand dollars Australian for a replacement unit. Now, much like anyone who's just been given this sort of information, um, you sort of take a couple of minutes to reflect on decisions you've made throughout life. It's led, led you to this position that you're in. And then you discover that, well, there ain't too much you can really do. So he got in contact with me and I made a few phone calls to see if there was anybody around that was doing an aftermarket conversion because you know a lot of these um, yeah, prestige uh, prestige motor vehicles when they get a few years on them people like to do some modifications to them change a few things around if they can and aftermarket head units you can imagine are probably one of them you know um, so we did a bit of homework and started looking around a little bit and um, trying to work out what we could or couldn't do turns out at this stage there is nothing readily available on the market that's sold as a semi-reliable solution to replacing this unit for the 2015-2016 Continental. So the unfortunate fact of the matter is that um, this gentleman just had to bite the bullet and go through Bentley. So I do believe he managed to get the unit for around the seven, seven and a half thousand dollar mark and was told that it'd be here in a week after he'd paid cash up front, of course. So the unit arrived and he got the phone call to say that it was ready. He got excited and said, all right, I'm gonna go get this thing fitted and then I'll have my Bentley back in one piece and I can enjoy the Bentley experience once again. So on arriving to pick up the vehicle, uh, he'd already spoken to me about um, getting his hands on the old unit to try and find out what was wrong with it, uh, whether it was through me or through anybody else that he deals with. We were keen to have this as a spare should it fail again down the track and we could possibly do a bit of a repair on it and have a spare sitting on the shelf um, which we'd probably never ever need again so he went to pick up the vehicle they said here you go sir your vehicle is ready to go new unit is fitted enjoy and he said no problem he said I'll just grab that old unit as well and take it with me they said no 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 you can't do that you can't take that unit he said, why not? He said, well, if you want to take that unit, there is a, a further $5,000 core deposit. And think about that core deposit. So a core deposit, um, for anyone uninitiated, in the, in the automotive industry or any, any service industry, when 
you're replacing a unit, you can either buy a brand new unit outright. This is, you know, in, in any normal industry, any normal um, interaction. You can buy a brand new unit for full tilt, which is what this gentleman was under, of the understanding that he was doing, $7,500. Why would you not think that's full tilt? So you can buy the brand new unit full tilt, or you can go for an exchange or a refurbished unit for a slightly lesser amount. Now, when you do that, most of the time, you are, well, and all, for all intents and purposes, all the time, you are required to give your core back, your core unit back, so it can be refurbished and reconditioned and then further sold on. And so the cycle continues. So you get a refurbished unit that was somebody else's that was, was given into them on a swap or on an exchange. And then their unit gets refurbished to factory specifications. You take your broken unit in and you get that other unit back. And, and so the cycle continues. So there's no reason for us to think that this should be anything other than an exchange unit, I guess, um, in my opinion. So what exactly are they doing? Are they just charging an extra $5,000 to keep their old dead product off the shelves and out of people's houses, out of people's workshops like me? Or are they doing refurbished units? Because they are the only, you know, realistically, they're the only two scenarios that I can think of. Um, so I'm just sort of taking a punt and uh, putting it out there and thinking, well, something's not right. Yeah, when you, when you, if you pay $7,500, they tell you, and this is what they told me, there was no mention of this at all until he went to pick the vehicle up that day. So if you pay $7,500 for a replacement brand new unit, both of these items should be your property. Am I wrong? You know, I, I, I can't see any other way of viewing it. Anyway, I wasn't part of that negotiation, uh, but we did manage to keep this for uh, a week or two. So I've got it for a week. Um, to basically open up as I have now, have a bit of an eyeball through it and see if there's anything obvious in there. If there's a dead mouse or something in there, then obviously we'd be able to say, well, there's the problem, but I'm going to guess it's uh, something to do with uh, something, you know, some sort of a logic item on the board or something has failed and it's, it's dropping in and out and causing intermittent faults. But uh, without being destructive, there's probably not a heck of a lot I can do anyway. So just looking around at, at a basic level, um, it's pretty well shielded. You can see there's a ridiculous amount of shielding contacts that go onto the, um, onto the lower housing. Um, so it is a reasonably good quality bit of gear. This is made by Continental, a um, you know, German-based company, I believe. Um, it's made in Czech Republic, but by the Continental company. They are absolutely massive in uh, automotive and uh, any anything to do with vehicles, um, tires, sensors, uh, transmission controls, you name it, they, they do it, and obviously head units and um, entertainment units for cars. So I wouldn't expect it not to be a quality bit of kit. I'm going to take a punt and say that this here is going to be the GPS unit going out to the antenna here. Uh, amplifier down the back here, uh, there's nothing discreet on it at all, no uh, MOSFETs, etc. It's pretty, um, that I can see anyway, it does look pretty, pretty basic. It does have active cooling in it. There's a fan on the back there, so um, that was one of the one of the potential uh, faults they thought was that it was perhaps overheating. But when I asked if they'd actually come up with anything positive to say it's definitely this or it's definitely this fault, um, they were unable to give a definite. So you yeah you, know, you want to make sure your fingers on the pulse and you've got every last bit of faith. Seven and a half thousand dollars is a pretty big round to be firing out of the parts cannon. So you want to be sure. Um, as sure as you possibly can be and well I don't know I think most of us slightly more old school tech guys have got our thoughts on what um, some of the fitting workshops do these days but yeah I, um, I I hope this fixes the problem for him but I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't um, I'm not going to speak too much out of school because I have been wrong before I'm sure we all have this DVD drive here um, is nothing special at all. Uh, DVD M5, this is a fairly generic off the shelf DVD drive. I think you can get these for around, I don't know, between 50 and 100 bucks Australian. Um, definitely nothing too fancy in that. Uh, but as someone who spent an awful lot of time working in high-end audio, uh, high-end hi-fi and high-end audio uh, equipment, 
to find something relatively generic in a high-end expensive piece of equipment is not all that uncommon but overall you know I've, I've sort of looked down through all here I can't see any it doesn't look like any smokes gotten out of anything nothing was unplugged nothing is sort of screaming look at me um, there's no capacitors exploded on the board or anything but it didn't you'd be able to smell anything that's burnt out I'm just gonna say um, it's one of those uh, uh, a mystery that will remain unsolved as to what exactly the problem was but I don't think it's unreasonable for anyone to say that uh, seven and a half thousand dollars for this unit it's up there so I uh, hope those boys at Bentley know what they're doing so as far as tearing down this is probably about as far as I'm happy to go at this stage um, my name is on this at the dealership and I did have to leave my uh, name rank and serial number as you'd expect um, and it was given to me in an intermittently serviceable condition so I dare say that if they get it back uh, with nothing but a big ball of smoke being let out of it um, I'm probably gonna have some questions to answer and I don't know what'll happen the Queen's Guard will turn up on my doorstep and take away one of my dogs or who bloody knows but yeah, I'm just not willing to take too much of a risk with somebody else's property. But nonetheless, thought it'd be interesting to at least open it up and see what all the hullabaloo is about. And I must say, it ain't about that much, to be quite honest. Um, she's a pretty, pretty basic bit of gear. Albeit so basic that I can't put it back together in the right order. probably static the thing by now anyway I should also add that I am never one to berate somebody for owning an exotic vehicle I did uh, a good couple of years of my apprenticeship in a workshop that specialized in exotic motor vehicles and you you sort of you get to know these people and you realize that you know these people actually work pretty hard for what they've got most of them I mean you know the ones that I've been in contact with and if someone gets to the age of 60 and they've busted their ass putting people back together in trauma wards or um, you know giving people physical abilities that they never would have had through marvels of medical science um, <laughs> more power to them so um, you know if anyone out there is saying oh well it's a Bentley if he can't afford to fix the radio he can't afford to to own a Bentley no that's bullshit that's um that's bullshit uh, these these things here uh, in my opinion you know at this level where we're just talking about a car stereo unit um, yeah as we've seen there's nothing inside this that screams you know anything elaborate or exotic or esoteric it's really very very simple so seven and a half grand or twelve and a half grand outright value is um yeah i'm i personally i'm just not seeing it i am kind of disappointed that there was nothing screaming at me um you know i was hoping that we might find a half-eaten cheeseburger or something in there that had been jammed in um at least something obvious to say okay well this is this is why this has cost you so much but um at this stage it's looking like it's a um, it's going to remain a mystery. If there's anyone out there that has a CAN bus bench, a test bench, um, I would love to know what's involved in getting something like that set up. Because um, when, I, when I was talking to another um, a car audio specialist in Brisbane, we agreed that if someone was able to get in there, you son of a bitch. We agreed that if someone was able to find a way to test and repair these things, he could quite easily still repair them, make however much money you wanted realistically, and sleep well at night, and still come in at under a third of the cost of, um, of one of these units to replace. So uh, if anyone's out there and wants to take this stuff on, it would appear there's going to be a growing market because... This isn't going to be the first, and it's definitely not going to be the last. And so closes 
vault. Whether this will be refurbed and resold, I don't know. I, I, I can't say I'd even know where to guess on what the demand for refurbished units of these would be. No idea what their failure rate would be. I'm imagining mobs like Bentley, well any manufacturer likes to keep that sort of stuff pretty, um, they like to keep those cards pretty close to their chest. And rightly so I suppose, but you know, these days we're able to find out more and more whether it be leaked or whether it be freedom of information things. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if, if this wouldn't just end up on a big pile of um, failed units. If they're charging seven and a half thousand dollars for each one of these to be replaced, in my opinion, I'm I'm going to say that I think they're probably covering their costs, <laughs> and then some. So um, why they'd need to refurb them, I don't know. I don't think they would, uh, unless they've had that many failures that uh, they are unable to get their hands on new units anymore. I don't know, but yeah, there she be. 2015-2016 Bentley Continental GTV8S. Entertainment module. Eh, something interesting. Thanks for watching. See you next time.